So here's my setup. I have a low friction platform here and I have basically just a momentum cart. Uh, I put a little bit of foam there at the end so that when it crashes in, it doesn't do any damage. Not that it's going to do much damage. It's just going to make kind of an irritating noise. Now, I'm going to let this thing go from up here. Let's see what it does when it hits. Okay, it's hitting right about in the middle of that low friction platform. All right, it caused it to rotate. Very good. Well, here's the amazing part about that. Um, do it one more time. You may think that nothing big happened there. Okay, I'm not sure why that. Try one time. There you go. So we got some rotation out of it. A rotating object has angular momentum. Okay, no problem. Here's an interesting thought though. In order for you to give money, you have to have money. In order for you to give energy, you have to have energy. In order for you to give angular momentum, you had to have had angular momentum. This object gave, made that object rotate. It gave it angular momentum in a collision. Therefore, this object, moving in a straight line, must have angular momentum. We're going to show you that on paper here in a second. Okay? Again, if you can give angular momentum, you have to have angular momentum. Let's see some things that change it. So first of all, if we go closer to the pivot here, okay? Closer to the pivot, same spot. All right? And then let's move far from the pivot. Same velocity, same mass, farther from the pivot. I hope you can see that far from the pivot, it gave more angular momentum. Once again, far from the pivot, close to the pivot, closer to the pivot, not as fast. What about, we'll do, we'll just do it halfway in between, so here we go. But what about if I start from up here and I give it more velocity? Yeah. So if this has more velocity, it can give more angular momentum, which means it, which means it has more angular momentum. But what about we add more mass? So let's do from the center, from here. So here you go. No, our low mass. Okay, high mass. Higher mass. Wow, notice that works a lot. That really moved a lot. So now, let's go and look at this on paper and talk about angular momentum from a linearly moving object. So, lin angular momentum from a linear object. That's very interesting, isn't it? Well, in physics, the way that we write angular momentum, which is a vector, equals r cross p. Now, I've used this cross product before, and some people are like, what is that? This says parallel components only. Okay? Now, uh, you'll notice that in the lab, we found out these things increase the angular momentum of the cart. And that was more mass, uh, more distance from the pivot, And what was the other one? Uh, oh, and more speed. Okay, well, M and V is momentum. Huh. So these two things would equal momentum. So more momentum equals more angular velocity that you can give. Well, this distance from the pivot, that's what this is. Let's remind ourselves that this is known as the moment arm. And I like to call it as R perpendicular. Perpendicular to what? Well, if it was a force, and there's a video called the, mo the uh, pegboard, you should look at that, okay? A bunch of dots here, etc. I could do all those, blah, blah, blah. And what we did is we put a pivot here. That's terrible. And I put a mass M and another mass M, and they were balanced because the distance from the pivot was the same. But we found out that if you moved the mass downwards, even though this distance to the pivot decrease or increases, the, the perpendicular distance to the pivot does not. This perpendicular distance from what I call the line of action, perpendicular to the pivot, I call R perpendicular. That's a terrible diagram. We're gonna try it here. So likewise, if I have a pivot, a place that I could pivot, it's also known as a reference point. So if I have an object moving this direction, with mass m 
and a velocity of v, so it has a momentum of mv. Well, you can see that this is the distance, but that doesn't matter. You extend the line of action, pretending that this is where p is, and then perpendicular from the pivot to the line of action is r perpendicular. All right? Then this would tell you how much angular momentum you have. The angular momentum for this object would equal this r perpendicular times the momentum. Now let's try to do this with an actual problem just to give, now, oh sorry, just to think through what we did in the lab a little bit here. So if I increase r, in other words, if the object were up here so that r, it hits at this point, then r would be bigger. Because when we say it's a pivot, we're saying imagine there's an object like that rotating platform that you could hit that could pivot at that point. Because if there's no pivot, if it cannot rotate and have angular momentum, none of this makes any difference. Well, imagine, this is your pivot, you've got a bar here, okay? So, you hit close to the bar, small moment arm, small angular momentum. You hit farther away, then you have a bigger moment arm, bigger momentum, bigger angular momentum. Likewise, more mass or more velocity for the object would also increase your angular momentum. Well, let's imagine that we have an object moving this direction. Okay, here's mv, your momentum. Let's say we have a pivot, uh, I don't know, we'll put a pivot right here. This is your pivot or your reference point. When again, when we call this your reference point or your pivot, you are saying, imagine there's an object that, has a, that can pivot at this point. How much angular momentum could this object give to it? So let's imagine that either a bar or a wheel, it could be a wheel that you bump into. So what you do is you extend the line of action past the pivot. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this, so let's get some numbers. Let's say that this is theta. We'll say this is the distance to the pivot. Your, you, you extend the line of action past the pivot, then perpendicular. This is your moment arm. So in this case, L, equals your moment arm, sorry, times your momentum, or r cross p. Our, ang our moment arm at this point would be d sine theta times mv. Now, if you were to give me those numbers, we could easily calculate them, all right? That's how an object moving linearly can have angular momentum and how to calculate it.